in 2017, the Community Foundation of the Fox River Valley produced this video to tell the story of the early history of St. Charles, Illinois. This video also is a tribute to the many residents of the city who have promoted philanthropy through our organization. Due to its length, the video is divided into five sections for the convenience of the viewer. These sections are a country town, building a city, the Gates Baker Norris era, education, and leisure, recreation, and parks. And now, the story of St. Charles, Illinois, part three, the Gates Baker Norris era, 1926 to 1980. Throughout its history, the community of St. Charles has been blessed with generous benefactors. But the greatest legacy of all was left by an extraordinary family. That family consisted of members John Warren Gates and his wife, Dolora Baker Gates. Colonel Edward John Baker and his wife, Harriet Rockwell Baker. And Lester James Norris and his wife, Dolora Angel Norris. In the mid to late 1920s, the Bakers and Norrises were responsible for major construction projects that brought a renewed spirit of optimism to the city. Their philanthropic outreach continued for more than 50 years thereafter. As background, the Bakers and Norrises inherited their wealth from John and Dolora Gates. John Gates was born and raised in West Chicago, Illinois. His parents, Essel Avery and Mary Warren Gates, had three other children, but they died before John was 18. On a visit to St. Charles, John met and fell in love with Delora Baker. They married in 1874. Delora grew up on a farm two miles west of St. Charles. In the 1870s, she moved into town with her parents Edward and Martha Baker, her brother Edward, later known as Colonel Baker, and her sister Laverne. Although John Gates was unsettled and failed at several business attempts, he finally found success. His first breakthrough was convincing ranchers in Texas to purchase the newly patented product called barbed wire. He was so successful that he soon was buying wire companies and organizing them into the American Steel and Wire Company. His company later was purchased by J.P. Morgan's U.S. Steel. As an aside, Gates' attorney was Elbert Gary, who helped J.P. Morgan consolidate the various steel companies into U.S. Steel. Gary became the first president of U.S. Steel was co-founder of the Gary Wheaton Bank, and is remembered as the man for whom the steel town of Gary, Indiana was named. In addition to John Gates' interest in steel, he also invested in an oil company in Port Arthur, Texas. He became a director of the business and a major stockholder. Called the Texas Company, it eventually was named Texaco. John Gates earned the nickname of Bet a Million Gates for his proficiency with cards and other games of chance. He was a flamboyant, self confident man with big dreams. From the 1880s until their deaths, John and Delora lived in several locations their home on Gamble Street in St. Louis, their Chicago mansion at 2944 South Michigan Avenue their estate in Port Arthur, Texas, and a chateau in Paris. They also rented an apartment at the Waldorf Astoria, and later a luxury suite at the Plaza Hotel in New York, a hotel which Gates helped to finance. Yet in spite of their wealth, 
John and Delora never forgot their family or the city of St. Charles. Gates built a home for his parents, Essel and Mary Gates, on 2nd and Indiana Streets. He started a home for boys in 1904 on 900 acres of land just west of St. Charles. Gates was sincere in wanting to make a difference in the lives of those who had few advantages in life. The institution, which was intended to provide a helping hand to homeless boys, eventually became a correctional institution for hardcore youth offenders. John Gates died in 1911. His funeral was held in the ballroom of the Plaza Hotel in New York City. Two years later, John and Dolores' only child, Charles Gilbert Gates, died of a heart attack at the age of 37. After Dolores' death in 1918, the Gates' fortune, estimated to be between 40 to 50 million dollars, was bequeathed to Dolores' brother, Colonel Edward J. Baker, and her niece and namesake, Dolora Angel, enabling them and their spouses to become the greatest benefactors in the history of St. Charles. And this is where our story of the philanthropic benevolence of the Baker and Norris family begins. John and Dolora Gates provided the means, and the Bakers and Norrises accepted the responsibility to secure a more promising future for their hometown. Edward Baker was a young boy when his parents sold their farm and moved into town, where his father managed a hardware store on Main Street. Edward attended the West Side School in St. Charles, and later the Bryant and Stratton Business College in St. Louis. In 1889, he married Harriet Rockwell, whose father, H.T. Rockwell, served as mayor of St. Charles from 1885 to 1889. In 1891, Edward and Harriet had a son, whom they named after Harriet's father. Then, in 1902, the couple built a home on the corner of Fifth Avenue and Main Street, where they lived for nearly 40 years. Edward worked as an inspector of grain and railroad in Chicago. He also was appointed warehouse commissioner by three successive governors of Illinois. After 10 years of service, he resigned in 1907 to spend more time in St. Charles. Baker always considered himself a farmer. He bought and developed nine farms in the St. Charles area, including the beautiful Red Gate Farm. In 1914, the Baker's only child, Henry Rockwell Baker, died of tuberculosis. This was a devastating loss for the couple. As a memorial to their son, Edward and Harriet launched their philanthropy with a gift of over $275,000 to construct the Henry Rockwell Baker Memorial Community Center on South 2nd Street. The center, which was dedicated in 1926, also honors the young men and women from St. Charles who served in World War I. The building was designed to be a site for community meetings, civic events, and recreational programs. The Bakers left a trust to provide perpetual support for the center. In 2016, the trust made possible a $1.8 million renovation project for a new lobby, elevator, lounge, ADA-compliant washrooms, and air conditioning for the auditorium. Since 1966, the St. Charles Park District has managed the operations of the facility in exchange for space to house its administrative offices. After donating the Henry Baker Community Center to the city, Colonel Baker invested $200,000 in 1926 for the construction of the St. Charles National Bank at 200 West Main Street. As a member of the bank's board of directors, Baker oversaw the construction of the building, which was designed in the classical revival style. 
The elegant interior was trimmed in Italian white marble and had high ceilings, arched windows, and bronze light fixtures and furnishings. Colonel Baker bequeathed the building to his niece, Dolora Norris. Dolora is standing next to Colonel Baker in this photo. In 1960, the bank purchased the building from the Norris family, and later it was acquired by private investors for office space. Two years after the construction of the Henry Baker Community Center and the St. Charles National Bank, Colonel Baker built a first-class hotel in downtown St. Charles at 100 West Main Street, the site of the old Millington Mill, and later the Haynes Mill. The Baker Hotel opened in 1928 and was called the beauty spot of the Fox River Valley, and later the gem of the valley. The hotel's rainbow room, with its 2,620 dazzling lights under the glass block floor, featured notable musicians such as Louis Armstrong, Guy Lombardo, Eddie Duchin, Tommy Dorsey, and Lawrence Welk. In addition to the lavishly decorated rooms, the hotel included a coffee shop where Colonel Baker would visit with customers on an almost daily basis. The hotel also had a grill in the basement that men used for dining and playing cards. And the lounge, or trophy room as it was called, was a favorite place for guests to gather and relax. After his wife Harriet's death in 1940, the colonel lived his remaining days in his apartment on the fifth floor of the hotel. Until Baker died in 1959, the hotel was a bustling center of activity in the city. However, by the 1960s, people began to seek other vacation destinations as airplane travel became more accessible. In addition, the new Pheasant Run Resort opened in the early 1960s on the east side of St. Charles, attracting tourists and convention goers who otherwise would have stayed at the Hotel Baker. Delora Norris, who inherited the hotel from her uncle in 1959, transferred ownership of the building in 1970 to the Lutheran Welfare Services for a retirement home. The hotel reverted to private ownership in the mid-1990s and was restored in 1997 to its former splendor through the painstaking efforts of businessmen Craig Frank and Neil Johnson. In the mid-1920s, concurrent with the building of the hotel, Baker convinced state officials to bring Route 64 through the center of town, which put the small town of St. Charles on the map. Also, Baker funded the rebuilding of the Main Street Bridge over the Fox River between his hotel and the Arcata Theater. The bridge, designed by Lester Norris, included four bronze foxes, reminding residents and visitors that St. Charles was, and always would be, the pride of the fox. Colonel Baker also developed a great interest in harness racing, and in 1933, he bought a young trotter named Greyhound. The horse, known as the Grey Ghost, became the world's fastest trotter, retiring in 1940 with 15 world records to his credit. In 1935, the governor of Kentucky conferred the title of Colonel on Edward Baker for his role in advancing harness racing in America for furthering farming through research and test crops, and for his advancements in dairying and better breeding. Although he was thereafter referred to as Colonel, Baker made little fanfare over the title, preferring to be called E.J. or Mr. Baker. Greyhound died in 1965 and was buried at Baker's Redgate Farm in the northern part of St. Charles. In 1975, Greyhound was named 
Horse of the Century. Sadly, Baker died in 1959 and did not live to see this honor bestowed upon his beloved horse. Colonel Baker's final major gift to the community was made in 1952. He purchased the old Reed Fearson property on Cedar Avenue and constructed the Baker Memorial United Methodist Church in honor of his parents, Edward and Martha Baker. The majestic Gothic structure was dedicated in 1954. Colonel Edward J. Baker died on January 17, 1959. Although he no longer walks among us, he continues to be remembered for his extraordinary generosity that altered the future of St. Charles forever. The other beneficiary of the John and Delora Gates fortune was Mrs. Gates' niece and namesake, Delora Angel, who was born and raised in St. Charles. Delora Angel was the only child of Robert Frank and Laverne Baker Angel. Delora was nine years old when her mother died suddenly of a heart attack at the age of 45. The girl then spent her summers with her aunt and uncle, Delora and John Gates. When young Delora received her bequest as a teenager, her father managed her fortune, and they spent more of their time in Pasadena, California, where he had purchased a home. In 1923, Delora married Lester Norris of St. Charles, who was her childhood sweetheart. They were married at her father's home in Pasadena, but then returned to St. Charles to start their life together in their hometown. Lester was the son of Carol and Gertrude Norris. Carol was an undertaker in St. Charles. He and Gertrude lived on Fifth Avenue, next to Lester and Dolores' home. Lester attended the Chicago Academy of Fine Arts, where he became friends with Walt Disney, who also attended the school. Lester then was employed by the Chicago Tribune as a cartoonist. His talent is evident by this self-portrait that he drew. Lester bought half of the Hal Roach Studios and started making movies that included The Little Rascals, Laurel and Hardy, and the Harold Lloyd Silent Pictures. He and Delora are featured here with The Little Rascals. As the largest stockholder of Texaco, Lester was asked to serve on the board of directors. After careful thought, Lester gave up his movie career and concentrated on his board work and managing the family fortune and its philanthropy. He and Delora lived in a large home with 50 wooded acres on North Fifth Avenue in St. Charles. The home was purchased from the heirs of Dr. H. M. Crawford a physician who practiced medicine in St. Charles from 1848 to 1900. The Norrises raised five children. Family members include, from left to right, Lester, Laverne, Joanne, John, Lester Jr., Delora, and Robert. The couple's first major gift to the community was the construction of the St. Charles Country Club, which was intended to serve as a golf club for men. It opened in 1926 on the beautiful east shores of the Fox River, north of town. The club was one of the first efforts to develop recreational opportunities for the burgeoning leisure class. However, membership began to decline with the advent of the Great Depression in the 1930s. At the urging of Lester, the Board of Directors opened membership to families, and the club resumed its popularity. The original clubhouse was destroyed by fire in 1943 and rebuilt a few years later. In 1926, Delora and Lester Norris contributed $600,000 for the building of the Arcata Theater at First Avenue and Main Street in downtown St. Charles 
where the city's first hotel, the Birchall Hotel, once stood. The Arcata became one of the most outstanding cultural attractions in the area, hosting many well-known performers such as George Burns and Gracie Allen, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy, and the John Philip Sousa Band. Lester Norris was involved in the design of the theater, which reflected a Venetian-Spanish style. The Arcata has remained an elegant venue through the years, presenting live entertainment, musicals, and movies. The Baker Hotel and Arcata Theater anchored downtown St. Charles, breathing new life into the city. However, the stock market crash in 1929 and the Great Depression of the 1930s resulted in the closure of some manufacturing firms in St. Charles. The federal government's Works Progress Administration, or WPA as it was called, made it possible for many of the town's citizens to find gainful employment on public work initiatives. Colonel Baker and Delora and Lester Norris provided financial assistance for these projects that greatly impacted the well-being of their fellow citizens. And then in 1940, a modern government center called the St. Charles Municipal Building was constructed across the bridge from the Baker Hotel on Main Street. Financed by both the Bakers and the Norrises, the building soon became the image of the new St. Charles, a city with a bright and promising future. With the advent of World War II, Lester tried to enlist in the armed forces, but he was rejected because of his age. Looking for another way to serve, he became the national chairman of an initiative called Victory Gardens, which encouraged private citizens to grow their own food in an effort to reduce pressure on the public food supply. His friend, Walt Disney, agreed to help Lester promote the concept by drawing Mickey Mouse with a green thumb. Lester did indeed serve his country well during this difficult time in its history. Delora also devoted herself to the war effort by chairing the Red Cross Civil Defense Unit in St. Charles. The Norris family made many additional contributions to their hometown, including the construction of a hospital on North Fifth Avenue that was designed to resemble a colonial Williamsburg estate. The hospital was decorated by Dorothy Draper, the famous American interior designer whose career spanned from the mid-1920s to the late 1950s. Delnor Hospital served the community from 1940 to 1991. It then was converted into a residential living and rehabilitation center named Delnor Glen Senior Living. In the early 1990s, a new Delnor Hospital opened on Randall Road in nearby Geneva. Subsequently, it was named Northwestern Medicine Delnor Hospital. The hospital, which retained the Delnor name, serves the residents of St. Charles and the surrounding communities. As an aside, the word Delnor represents the first three letters of Delora Norris's first and last name. Through the years, St. Charles has been diligent in its efforts to honor the Baker and Norris family by preserving each of their names in meaningful ways. Lester and Delora Norris's philanthropy also extended to education. A new St. Charles High School opened in 1977 on 70 acres of land on Dunham Road that was donated by the couple. A year later, the family contributed several million dollars to erect an art center on the school's Dunham Road campus in the name of Delora Norris. And in 1980, a sports complex in the name of Lester Norris and a recreation center in the name of the couple's son, John, were gifted to the community. Both are located on the campus of the high school, now named St. Charles East High School. 
Over the years, the extraordinary generosity of John and Delora Gates, Colonel Edward and Harriet Baker, and Lester and Delora Norris served to elevate the civic pride of St. Charles. Nearly every area of the community's life was touched by them. Education, health care, government, tourism, culture, and religion. Without a doubt, the Gates-Baker-Norris era transformed the city of St. Charles in profound and lasting ways.